Okay, welcome to the next part of this series on alchemy. Uh, we're back after a short break and um, we're hoping that we'll be able to wrap this up this week with a few different live streams. Uh, we're not, I mean, we're, we're more than halfway from what I'm intending to do with this. And uh, I think that's going to be great. Uh, today, we are looking at spectral uh, resynthesis or the, the spectral synth engine inside Alchemy. This is uh, building on what we did last time with additive. So if you haven't seen the additive video, go back and check it out. And of course, we did some effects and other things before that. So our goal then today is to talk about spectral and we'll get into a few different things at the end of this. We're going to talk about the pitch tab, uh, which is right here. And we're going to look at an instrument where we use the additive plus spectral uh, together. There is an option for that. Um, and then I think we're going to save formant and granular for next time, uh, just because we'll get into too much if we try to do too much. Um, and then at the end of that, we're going to be looking at using the global parameters mixed with the ABCD sources and the morph option um, as a performance tool. And so that's kind of where we're going to wrap up the whole thing. So first and foremost, let me initialize the preset. Do that with the file tab here. That just leaves a saw loaded up. Um, from our vintage analog collection, that's the default. And what we're going to do is uh, come under source A, we're going to import. So you either have to load a preset, which does this um, in terms of the spectral, or you have to uh, import something directly. So um, I'm going down to my places. This is the, these are loaded here by default, sampled instruments. And we're going to start with a guitar, which is what I had when you first started watching this. The vintage Strat, turning off formant, just doing spectral for this first part. Um, let's click on the vintage Strat. You could do, as with the other ones where you're doing analysis mode, you can do a single sample or any variety. We're going to do the unlimited one, which means it's going to load the entire vintage strat.exs in. Um, we're going to actually, let's start with just the single sample. That just takes one of them and brings it in. A very short import, even though um, with this guitar, there's not that many files. So the, even the unlimited isn't bad, um, but we're going to import and you'll see it's already done the analysis. We're going to click on the edit mode. You'll see it's one file across the entire range. We'll click on spectral and here you have it. We're going to change our resolution to be uh, linear, which will show all of the harmonics across the instrument. So it's very guitar like it's not exact. Uh, none of these resynthesis things are exact. That's the whole point. We could just load up a sampled instrument if we want them to be exa exact. That's fine. Um, but what we have here are a few different things in play. One of them is when you do this re resynthesis mode, it's uh, creating bins is what they call them for all the different content of the file. And then it uses a few different options to recreate the sound. Uh, it can use pitch, which it loads pitch back into those bins, which is why it sounds kind of like the guitar. You can see the, uh, the, the structure there in the spectrogram, or we can do noise. And you'll see that it looks kind of like what we have here, uh, except with noise in each of those different, uh, the bins is what they're calling them. I don't know if I like the bin analogy, but uh, it, I guess it works. It's useful to call it what it is in the manual for your sake. 
Uh, and then we have, just like with additive, if, again, if you haven't watched the additive one, we go through some more of these different parameters. We have a volume, which is useful when we're doing multiple types together. Um, so you can balance those. Cool. And we have a couple different banks of things. So let's start with some of these um, because they're, they're a little bit more useful. And um, I'm not going to go through every little detail, but um, I do think it's important to at least have a sense. These are the, the spectral effects. Uh, and so, for example, bloom. Loaded up, we have four different knobs, a mix knob, threshold, a shift, and an attack. And so the bloom, it produces, and this is from the manual, but it produces a burst of frequencies based on the source sound. So it's going back to the source, it's doing a burst of frequencies. Um, it, supposedly, and let's switch this back to pitch. There we go. Let's set it to 100% so we can actually make sure it's working. Shift up the whole spectral content. Or lower it. Um, let's option go back to zero for that. So it's adding like this additional layer to the sound. Uh, so this is the bloom effect. It's a uh, pretty useful, but um, it's also at the same time. A specialized effect and so we get to add any of these in. Um, blur, it's just a frequency blurring type effect. Let's go back up to 100%. If you want to hear what they're doing just go to 100%. And then you can mix that back in if you want. There we go, a little bit of blur. Um, the cloud effect. So this cloud effect produces what uh, is described as a cloud of frequency grains. And I'm thinking this is kind of like granular synthesis just in the spectral realm. Um, that's pretty close, I think, the description. Let's again go to 100% so you can hear this. I'm just holding one note down. I mean, that's pretty cool. Whew. Really cool. I like the cloud one. That's always been one of my favorites. Frequency sh uh, shift, frequency stretch, gate, glide, metalize, shimmer, shuffle, smear. Um, you can go in the manual and look at what each of those do, but they're all going to work on things in this spectral uh, environment. Let's, I've always been interested with the metalize one just because the, the word is kind of cool. I don't know how cool it really is. Uh, in the case of metalize, the simplify knob, just so you know, reduces the number of effect generated frequencies. Um, so you get a simpler or more complex sound. <laughs> so 
So for me, this has always been another way to get kind of FM synthesis content, but to get it in the context of a sound that you already have an idea of what you want. Let me explain a little bit more about what that means. So I'm going to come back into import. That was a guitar sound. Let's go out a little bit, maybe and do... some brass. So we'll do the full, no, I'll do a trombone because I want that sound. Okay, metalize still is here. We didn't change any of our settings. We just loaded a new sound. And so if I were going to create that type of metallic brassy sound with an FM synth, it would take a lot more effort and time to get that right. Here I can do it right off the bat. And then I'm going to turn on pitch correction. The metalize actually kind of messes with the pitch a little bit. And so it's nice to be able to have the pitch correction in the next part of the chain. Higher speed. A couple funky notes there, but that's cool. Cool. Let's turn that back off for a minute, go back into spectral. So some cool things. If we turn on the second one, you're going to notice all of the same ones. So now I can do a metalize followed by a smear. A shimmer, I should say. We get two really cool effects happening um, between these. We can go to a full 100% mix on that one if we want. Most of the time we get to the second one, I find myself doing something like this. where the second one is um, a little bit more of an additive effect onto the first one, and maybe even the first one, you know, we can do at a smaller percentage too. Ground that pitch in there. And I wonder, A little bit better with a release. Cool. So you can go through those. There's the, the shimmer, the shuffle, the smear. Uh, each of them are descriptive to a certain degree. They're going to describe kind of what's happening with each of them. Uh, and so you get to work with those. Now let's talk. Uh, that's, that's really it for spectral. Um, in terms of those effects. Let's look at um, the editor now for this because we have, right? So we have three different tools. We have a lasso tool, a drawing tool, and an eraser tool. Uh, and then we have the draw and the mask mode, um, which we can look at. They're not too, I mean, this is uh, essentially a drawing tool. Uh, which is one of the things I really love about this because it allows us to come in here 
with the spectral content and actually draw it. Um, so with the draw, the paint, this draw mode, um, the paint tools can be used to modify the image itself, um, either by deleting, uh, drawing new or deleting existing content. Um, the mask, it's the entire image is masked as if covered with a layer of black wax. That's from the manual. It says like a, like a layer of black wax. I love that in the manual. It's really funny, actually. Uh, the paint tools can be used to selectively, selectively reveal parts of the underlying image as if scraping away the wax to reveal the layer underneath. So, like that. You'll see. Um, and of course, uh, let's see here, we have the undo button at the top, so we'll use that. Although, looks like the undo button just deleted it. So we may have to do that again. Cool. that was supposed to in my head have import or just undone the one thing we did, but that's okay. Let's come out of here. Weird. Let's, oh, maybe we needed to undo multiple. There we go. So we just had, so when I undid, it actually did work. I just put the, the wax back on top of it. Uh, we're going to stick with the drawing mode for a moment because um, I want you to see a little bit of what this can do. So for instance, if I like the sound, but I want kind of like uh, something to, Oh, that's pretty loud. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see if the undo does it right that time. Okay, cool. So you can see I can draw right on there and we can do different. So one of the reasons I, I'm going to the circle is because I can change the color. Now the color represents uh, amplitude of those frequencies. So if I just added that subtle one, you can hear how subtle that is. And that's one of my preferred ways of working. Let's pull it. Let's see here. That initial drop that I had done before. Okay. Okay, and let's do one right up here at the beginning. Okay, so just a couple examples of things we could do. Um, we do have other things in here like horizontal lines, transients, vertical lines. Um, and so each of these can do a little bit different. How useful is this really? That's a great question um, that sometimes I ask. Um, and, I, you know, I don't use it a ton, but every once in a while I find it's actually really interesting to come in here and mess with some of the, the parts of this because um, I like being able to do that. Let's go back to the circle. It's just like you could add a little bit of discord, you know, up in the, the higher. bit of motion there you know so 
and we can do that we can do a, a little bit more jagged but at any time of course we can really ramp this up and do bigger size with brighter color almost like on the verge of a didgeridoo type sound with that and it would be i mean that's kind of what it, you know you're doing with that instrument but we can also really do like some interesting things down below Also, you can do just completely random things with the eraser tool. And I think, um, we'll just leave it on the circle for now, but. That's even more subtle in some ways, but let's do a little pattern down here. Each of these numbers represent one second. So we're about, it's not quite one per second, but. Okay, cool. So you get the idea. It's like an artist exercise more than anything. I'm going to catch up with the comments for a second. Brian says, I get terrible aliasing with spectral synthesis, even on the highest quality settings. And I should say, I'm just on great. Let's set this up to ultra. I think part of it, Brian, is that if you turn down um, how much, what the color is so that it's, it's less amplitude, you're going to end up with a lot less of the sound that, which is like aliasing. Um, I'm not sure the actual engine of this, if it's, you know, dealing with, you know, aliasing in the way that you think of it. Um, but I do think that you get such, uh, really harsh sounds when you're doing things with this setup you know, to the hundred percent there like that. I can't even play more than that. Um, so you're going to get a lot better results if you're adjusting that color down to a lower amplitude. Um, Hape Cider, Bitumen, thanks for coming back. Um, yes, still at it for sure. Cinematic sound. I think this is great for cinematic sound design. It's like 50-50. You could just play something and then use automation out in your timeline to get that right. Um, and then Cider says it would be nice when combined with other types of synthesis. And we'll talk about actually one built-in combination that they really um, are using this for. But you can do some really cool things with this. So um, let's go back. Well, first of all, we'll look at this tool here, which allows us to do various things um, with a lasso tool that you might be expecting. Um, ah, and I just deleted the whole thing. Which should not be that easy. Whoa. This may be the first time in human history, if you look at this, that logic is letting me function with zero tracks. That's really bizarro. Look, I'm running Logic with no tracks. Usually it makes you have one. Um, let's see if I can get back to where I was, though. Because I hit the wrong button. Oof. And I don't know if I've ever actually used... Let's see how the lasso tool actually works here. 
I don't know if, no, nope, that's not it. It doesn't work with that one. So maybe this is just, um, no, what, what would that be? Is this just going to play that spot? Maybe that's just going to. I have no idea. Maybe it's a movement thing. Weird. I guess I don't know what specifically that's uh, the lasso tool is doing for us. I'll have to look it up. Let's see. Fire races. Lasso, turn it on to activate a select mode. Drag across the frequent, okay, in mask mode. In draw mode, your selection can be used as a brush shape. I'm not seeing that possible. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. I just looked it up. So lasso make a selection, switch over to draw, and then I can draw. Oh my gosh, that's like, I had no idea. That's freaking amazing. Oh, that is just like, that is. Okay, so that's like for me, I've never done that, so I just learned something new. Um, I've never really used a lasso tool, but I'm going to be using it a ton. Because you can do all kinds of really cool things with a spectral paintbrush. Just do some like crazy upper harmonics up here. I'm in. And it's also saying in mask mode. So in mask mode, we draw with this. And I, I think I remember this one more than the other. But I'm going to draw like a crazy mask here. And now, only this will play. So that's pretty cool. And then, of course, ooh. Um, let's go back to circle and we can draw back in some of the other parts of this if we want. Okay. That's cool. Okay, so I learned something new myself. Keep in mind, we did this on the import with one file. Um, that means um, when I imported this, this original one was the trombone file. It doesn't sound like a trombone anymore, but I just did it as a single import and it's across the whole thing. We can always, on the import, do this as multiples and then each of those layers are going to you're going to be able to edit those separately so you can actually go through and say like you know i want a certain mangling of the spectral file in the low part a different one in the you know the second part third part fourth part or across the whole range depending on how many original samples there were cool so i mean this gets really complex really fast with all of these things. In fact, 
if I were doing a, a, a lot of sound design using Alchemy like this, I would be using the notepad on each track uh, to really notate exactly what's happening where. Uh, that's one of the reasons why the notepad is so critical um, because you do per track and you can just say, you know, Alchemy, da da da. Um, and then you write down all of the different things that you're doing with this. So when you reopen this, or you can always do this, uh, you know, separately um, in a notebook with a pen and paper kind of thing too. So it really just depends on how you do it. But this gets so complex, you need to remember what you're doing and where you're doing it, um, in my opinion. Okay, let's come back, import audio, and this time we're going to do the same file, but this time we're going to do additive plus spectral. We're going to still leave formant out for now because we're getting into that in the next video. But we're going to do additive plus spectral. And we're going to do a single sample again. And we're going to uh, import it in. So now you'll see the little blue line at the top of additive and the little blue line at the top of spectral. It means they're both there. They're both on. It's not an either or in this case. But one thing you're going to notice when we get here, um, and let's turn off, well, we leave harmonic on because that's a default. But spectral, one thing you'll notice right off the bat is that uh, when we imported this with just spectral, pitch was the default on. And now when we do additive plus spectral, the noise by default is on. So just to, let's hear this, just the spectral. Maybe. That sounds so exciting. Let me go back to additive for a second. Interesting. Well, I'm not hearing anything just from that, although on the spectrogram, something is showing up. Interesting. Maybe they both have to be on. I didn't think they did, but. So the idea here is that with the additive, it's building up the the original sound the resynthesis of the original sound using the partials in this case sine waves and then the spectrals put into noise um, and it's filling out different parts of the sound using the noise in the spectral bins um do 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 <laughs> I'm not hearing a difference. We're, maybe it's the sample we loaded in. I'm not sure. Let me try one other one just um, to double check that real quick. Single sample import. Yeah, that is interesting. But even in pitch mode, I'm not hearing anything, so. I'll have to figure that out if it's related to to look at that because I'm not looking at all the different pieces here pitch format nothing there but I don't see anything 
something's not being analyzed properly. Because I see it with the additive. I'll have to figure that out. Because I'm not seeing um, the, the spectral analysis happening at all. When I turn that off. Let's just turn that on, but turn the volume down. Weird. Maybe this is a bug right now. I don't know. Shouldn't. Because I'm not hearing anything no matter what I do. The metallic part shouldn't have made a difference. Let's do this. We're going to initialize the preset. We'll try it one more time. Maybe I had a different setting that was causing some issues. Maybe I need, I don't think I need that form and turn it down. Okay, so there was something else happening. I don't know what it was. But it was a carryover from the trombone sample. So if you're ever running into that, you know, just re reinitialize. Hopefully you're not losing any work by doing that. But um, uh, so that's what that should sound like. Turn on the additive. <laughs> And then you can adjust this down or up, go to spectral. So two different pieces that you get to mix in. By bringing them together, it automatically switches the spectral over to the noise filling the bins. That way it's, it's adding like a little different part to the overall sound. Uh, but it's still the full spectral engine, which means you could go back to the, the pitch side. Just my release up so that it hangs out. Cool. So, I mean, look how complex that spectrogram is. I love it. Let's switch this back up to ultra mode. I don't, I mean, I get it, but I wish it would just default to ultra. So that's how those who are working. Um, and I like that you can put them together like that and uh, and change things around so it's like the additive can be the core part of the sound the spectral can be this tail thing that hangs out afterwards um, i just like that you can begin to build those together it has almost everything we would need in these two little effects areas meaning if i really want to fit but it's like too much of the high frequencies Or say I, I want to like balance them a little bit better, so I'm going to do pull out some of the low stuff. Um, you can't do as much of that up here, um, except we do have an equalizer. Um, and so we do, you know, lows. Let's not remove the lows. Let's remove some of the highs so that the spectral can fit in. Cool. 
cool. Imp cider, yeah. As soon as I reset it, I don't. I think something was stuck in there. I'm not sure what. It could be um, something in my editor was stuck, and I just need to reset it. But um, you know, that's part of. So here's something that I wish we had with this. I wish I could say, you know, save all of my spectral settings. Burr, 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 burr and um, copy them, open up a different alchemy and paste those settings into it. I don't believe we have any, uh, any options for that that I know of. I'm sure you can always like recreate them or you can just do a preset and build off of it. But in a case like that, if um, something was having an issue, which I, I don't even know where it was, none of the, the knobs were in the wrong place, but it could have been in the editor, uh, but it's like I needed to like reset it, then I lose all of my other work. And so um, that's kind of a bummer. Okay, so any questions about any of this? Uh, what, you know, what are you, what are you thinking? What do you want to know? Right now we have a small group on here, a really small group. What things about alchemy, spectral mode, um, are you curious about, if nothing, then this becomes a nice 42 or 43 minute stream and we move on with our lives. But um, I do, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, and then we will be returning in a day or two to wrap up all of these modes with uh, the formant and granular. And then from form and granular, we're going to go over to the, the morphing options. I think that'll be it. Um, cider. So the zones, you're asking what the zones are. Um, so the simplest way to put this is that all of the things that we do with the import audio inside Alchemy, uh, when I come in here to import, um, say we're going to do the same... Okay, we're going to do the same sax one I just did last, but this time we're going to do unlimited. And it's pulling the EXS file as the source, and that's what's being resynthesized. So then I'll let this do its thing. But it comes with zones because that's what samplers work with, and that's what we're pulling for in terms of this. So we could just drag a single audio file in there. We don't have to use EXS files, but... And we draw, drag a single file on top of that, it becomes one zone because that's what the, you know, that's what it's like using a quick sampler with one zone. If we're doing this, then um, it'll be a little bit more complex, but it's still basing the new resynthesis instrument off of the original zones of the EXS24 file. Uh, so I come in here, I say edit, and we go to main. And you'll see all these different things. I'm going to select MIDI. I have that on so that when I push. So each of those are a different file, resynthesized file at this point, using those zones. And... Um, this is, uh, I seem, I feel like I get different results every time I do this, but I'm sure I don't. Let me f draw a line in here, right? Uh, let's do a brighter. So we're going to do on F. You can hear how I do it on one note, but not the other ones. And that's because they're in different zones. And so the more zones you have, 
the more complex this gets, but select MIDI is your friend. But these are all the different zones that came from the original instrument that I imported. And that's why more than often than not, when I'm doing any of this type of synthesis based off of a, an instrument, I'm importing as a single zone instead of all of these. I have to have a really good reason to do it this way when I'm using spectral, additive, or even granular. Hopefully that makes sense. Well, we're at 45 minutes and 50 seconds. This thing is a beast. There's no question. It's very complicated. And I'm still, I still learn things when I, when I use it in a, if I'm really going for a specific thing, um, I end up going to kind of the same tools over and over when I'm doing certain things. Um, when I'm doing like my normal, like song music production, I don't use alchemy all that much. Um, I certainly do use it, but uh, it's less often. And it's usually when I'm going to create something that has more of an atmosphere or a sound that I'm looking for a very specific thing, then I'll come in here and create it. But it's just one tool in the toolkit. Um, I still find myself using sculpture more than alchemy. Sculpture, uh, if you've watched any of my videos over the past couple of years, you'll know I talk about that one as if it's one of my children. Um, I like it more than some of my children some of the time. Don't tell them I said that. Um, but it's just an amazing instrument. And um, it does so many cool things. Alchemy does some things better than anything. Maybe the last thing I'll end with um, is just a reminder that, for instance, let's do an Apple loop. And um, let's make it, let's do the other way. So we're going to do like a, like one of the songs. No. This is it right there. So I'm going to drag this over, do alchemy and I'll do spectral. Right. It's going to load it up. So now I click on my source A and we have positioning and speed just like we had with additive. So I can slow this down. Hold on a second, let's... Oof. Put user in timeout. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. So I can actually slow that down. Now you'll hear. I mean, between the position and the speed knob and each of these types, I mean, this is like really powerful. It's doing all of that time expansion compression without adjusting the pitch and it sounds decent in the process. So really cool. Slider says, I watched a lot of tutorials, but they were all covering the basics, even though they were four to five hours long. I never got deep into this plugin. And I'm so happy you're doing it now. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. So here's the real problem 
with most of the tutorials. There's been a couple that I've seen that do it right, I think. Um, most people who use this don't have any clue what half of this stuff does. Um, even when you read the manual, it's like you can tell that the people who wrote the manual only half understand half of what this does sometimes. And so it's a really complicated instrument. And um, I, you know, maybe not even the right person who doesn't know everything about it, but um, I think I've got a good sense for what it does do and why you would want some of these things in here. And so I hope I'm conveying some of that. But uh, it's a really cool, really cool instrument. Okay, I think we're going to pull the plug. It's one, well, afternoon here in Denver. Uh, we're going to get, a, hopefully, a bunch of snow tonight. We're supposed to get some sort of winter weather. And then uh, tomorrow, either tomorrow or the next day, we'll do the second to last. I'm hoping there's only going to be two more of these. Uh, we might go further if we need to, but um, I'm kind of hoping for about two more of these live streams about alchemy because, um, yeah, they're doing okay. Um, what you should all do, if you're still watching this, is make sure you post a link to this on all your social media so people watch it. Then we could keep on going forever, but um, with only a few hundred people watching, it's, it's a little harder to keep momentum going. Anyway... That's it. Uh, thanks for watching for those of you who are still here. And um, yeah, see you in the next couple of days for the next part of this series. There'll probably be a short video about something else intermixed. But the next live stream will definitely be about this.